So, you guys wanted to know what's the difference between the old and the new MacBook Pro? I think it's just a touch bar. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, you guys are still here? Okay, I guess I'll tell you a little bit more why I chose to upgrade. The first thing is first, there's now a Touch ID little thing right there. And you just put your finger on it and you don't have to fill in your password anymore. So, I mean, you know, for lazy people, that saves you a lot of time. Also, the old ones, they tend to be very obnoxious when you're typing. It's quite loud, the keyboard. On the new one, it's a little bit better. It's definitely not the quietest, but as you can tell, it's not as annoying. It's a much softer keyboard sound. So I guess if you try to type quietly in library, nobody's gonna glare at you. The new keyboard lights up late at night. So if you're somebody who likes to type in the dark, then it could be a useful feature for you. You can actually see what you're typing as all the keys light up. The new MacBook Pro also downloads things a lot faster because according to my brother, it has a better RAM. Uh, it was uh, 3733 megahertz, um, while the old one, it was 2133 megahertz. So, you know, um, more than a thousand something megahertz difference, so um, you know, significantly uh, better. So, you know, really good. Graphics wise, I don't think there's much of a difference. They are pretty much the same. So, the webcam on the laptops, the new one is slightly better. As you can tell on the right hand side, it has better color correction and lighting slightly better. While the old one, it's a little bit more core tone and it doesn't seem to adjust lighting as well. It seems a little bit dark, but overall, not much of a difference. It's still not great, the camera, so don't just get the laptop for the camera quality. Okay, so you're probably wondering what the touch bar actually does at this point. So you can do things like, you know, switch tabs by doing this. Um, there's also cool things that you can do within applications that work with this touch bar. So for example, let's say we want to do something with Logic Pro X, which is a audio slash music editing software. So if you open up this application, you can make an empty project, um, say we want to create something. And what's cool about this is that the touch bar actually changes depending on what application you open. So if we wanted to change something here, this is really cool. You can edit like this and then you know, change things by dragging the sliders up and down. Um, but some of the apps don't have this option though. So for example, if I'm in something that doesn't really have this option, then nothing won't show up. Um, I think for some apps that tends to happen. But if you do have an app that works well with it, it can be quite useful. Oh yeah, and you can log into your browser's account without remembering his password just using this uh, option. Yeah, pretty useful, I would say, you know. Did I mention you can kind of skip ads? Yeah, so you can drag this thing, and there you go. There's also less fan noise when you're using this. I haven't heard any loud fan noises since getting the new one. And also, the audio is slightly crisper when you play songs on it. Finally, there's also four of these Thunderbolt 3 ports. I think the old one, most of them come with two, so this is nice if you have more things they want to plug in. Not all of the new ones come with four, but most of them do. Last difference is that the new one comes with Wallet and Apple Pay, so if you want to add your cards on it, you can't do that. And also, they have the screen time option like your phone, so you can track how much time you spent online and what apps use the most of it. So I guess the question you're all wondering now is should I get the new MacBook Pro from 2020? Is it worth the upgrade? Well, I think it depends on what you're struggling with and what your problems were with your previous laptop. For me, it was the lack of storage space. I think it was 128 GB, the last MacBook Pro that I had in 2017. But the thing is, as you know with MacBooks, the system takes up so much storage that you actually don't get the entire 128 GB. So I think I only had about like a little bit more than half of that to work with. And it pretty much filled up my storage really fast and it was impossible to edit videos on there. There was not enough space for me to export and load everything on there. So I definitely needed to get a new laptop for more storage space and it was just a lot faster when I'm trying to export and render videos. Another problem that I struggled with my last laptop was that 
it would randomly crash sometimes so whenever it was around 80 something percent battery sometimes even when I just charged it it would just die on me and I wouldn't really know what happened and had to restart the laptop so some of those problems were the main things that were bothering me I don't think any of us were really trying to get the new MacBook Pro for its touch bar it's not a must feature for most of us but I mean if it is then good for you but I think that if you don't have any major issues you don't really necessarily need the new MacBook Pro but if there are already some major issues that you're struggling with like low storage space or just a lack of speed or something that was just really bothering you like there was a feature that kept crashing or something then you can look into getting the new MacBook Pro I think that the these new ones they start with 500 GB of memory space so it's a lot more um, memory that you get to work with you can download things they also if you get the education package it comes with everything they need like Final Cut Pro Logic Pro a lot of different programs so I hope that this review helped you guys let me know what you decide to do and I will see you next time